What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down the reason why wide receivers drop passes and how you guys can avoid these bad habits from happening to you. So I hope this video helps you guys out. Hope it could teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you are a wide receiver and would like a two-month daily wide receiver on-field and gym workout schedule to follow, check out that very first link in the description below for our ultimate eight-week wide receiver workout plan. You'll get access to over 500-plus wide receiver drills and gym exercises all mapped out into weekly schedules for you with the exact sets and reps to do and examples of each drill and exercise. So check out that very first link in the description below if you're interested in that, fellas. Let's get started with this video. So first drop we're going to be taking a look at here is for this deep like over-the-shoulder pass thrown to Christian Watson. So this is a pass that a lot of you struggle with, this kind of deep ball downfield, having to track it over the shoulder. And a lot of you do the same thing that Christian Watson does where the ball almost goes right through your hands. So there's two specific reasons I feel that he drops this thing. Number one, it's going to come down to his his eyes, right? And so I think honestly, probably 95% of all drops that happen to wide receivers are based on the eyes. Now, again, uh, a lot of wide receivers, I think everybody's heard the phrase, you want to have a diamond, you want to have soft hands. If it's an over the shoulder pass, you don't want to have a big gap between your hands. Everybody's heard that a million times, but, and everybody's probably heard, keep your eye on the ball a million times, but trust me, fellas, if you really focus on seeing that football, make contact with your hand, this bad habit will not happen. So you see how Watson, he's doing all the right things. He's tracking it over the shoulder. He's showing his hands late. He's not showing his hands super early. Now, I would like to see a little bit more connection with his hands on this deep over the shoulder pass. So if I'm watching film with him or I'm watching film with the receiver and they have this type of a drop, I'm telling him, hey, you got to move your pinkies together. You got to keep your pinkies connected because that prevents that ball from falling right through the middle. Now, honestly, he's a professional wide receiver. He obviously knows that, but even some of the best guys in the, in the game, and you might not consider Christian Watson the best receiver in the NFL, but guys, trust me, this guy comes out to a workout t-shirt and shorts. You're going to think he's one of the best wide receivers you've ever seen up close right? So all of these guys are insanely talented. They've trained, they know all the details, but some of these things happen to some of the best guys. So it's obviously going to happen to a high school receiver or a youth wide receiver. So you just have to keep that in mind. The details matter when it comes to catching because catching, all it is is repetition and details. So I would like to see his hands a little bit close together. That's number one. Same thing when you're getting a pass thrown over the middle. A lot of wide receivers, like if this ball is thrown, like let's say you're catching a three-step slant over the middle and your hands are in that diamond shape. A lot of wide receivers have a big gap between that diamond and that's where the ball goes right through so you have to make sure that they're not like touching and you're not stiff with it but they're as close as you possibly can get without being super tense now something that I tell my wide receivers to focus on when they have a drop pass when it, they take their eye off the ball is sometimes that phrase might not process for a wide receiver like every single athlete every single person is different different things will work for you that's why like you know like in school, I'm sure a lot of you have better subjects than others, right? Some of you might not be very good at math, but some of you might be very good at history. Just certain things process in your mind better than others, right? So for me just to sit there and say, hey, keep your eye on the ball, that's not going to process for every single wide receiver. Some of you might think, well, that's pretty simple. Yeah, I could do that. And then some of you might need some kind of phrase to help you remember that. Everybody's different. Every single position in football has trigger words, as I like to call it, to help with that. So something I tell my wide receivers is that you want to pretend your eyes are a camera and you want to take a photo of the football. Like everybody's that you know, probably seen like a self-portrait picture before. You put it on a desk, you put it on a nightstand, whatever it is. That person in the portrait takes up the whole photo. That's what you want the football to be. You want your eyes to be a camera. Snap the photo of the football, hit your hands. Another thing I'll tell my wide receivers, you want to see the football make contact with your hands. If you don't see it make contact with your hands, you're worried about getting upfield too quick. That's where a lot of drops happen on any pass, not just an over-the-shoulder pass. You have to see it make contact with your hands. You have to take a photo of the ball with your eyes. You have to keep your eye on it. Whatever's going to help you with that, and that will lead to less drops. Guys, 95% of drops, I feel, from what I've seen, are just all about the eyes. Let's focus on looking this in and let's focus on taking that photo let's play this again full speed one more time again fellas just make sure these problems do not happen to us it's all about details and it's all about reps when you're going routes versus air with your quarterback you're working out with your quarterback these are the things that you have to keep in mind with your catch everybody loves the route running the releases all that stuff and all that's great and all you all all of you need to work on that but at the end of the day if you can't finish the play you're not going to be able to stay on the field now we're going to look at this other catcher from nelson Aguilar coming over the middle so now everybody always harps on this guy for drop 
drops. And this is a good example of a reason why a lot of wide receivers will drop the ball coming over the middle, especially when the ball has some heat on it. So I'm sure all of you have heard that expression like, oh, you want to have soft hands. You know, like, oh, that receiver has soft hands. He's got soft hands over the middle. He's very, that implies that he's got good hands, right? He's got soft hands. Now, what does that exactly mean? So I don't know if any of you have ever been around, you know, an NFL wide receiver catching a pass. Like, I'll never forget it. I was at a Cowboys training camp. And Des Bryant was there just going through just like the jugs machine drills, catching from a quarterback. And when that ball made contact with his hands, you could not hear that ball hit his hands. No, you could not hear a single sound. It was the it was the quietest thing ever. It's almost like when you hear like guys who are really explosive do like a box jump and you can't hear their feet hit the box because they're so light on their feet. That's literally what it was like, right? And that's that quote unquote soft hands. So what does that exactly mean? That means when they catch that ball, they are staying in the webbing of your hands. So I'm sure everybody has heard the phrase, oh, catch the football in a diamond, right? You want to keep a diamond thumb and index finger connected, right? Now, when you catch the ball, if you're in that diamond, a lot of guys will have their palm palms facing out towards the ball. And when they catch this thing, that ball will hit and bounce off of their palms. That's when you hear that real loud like smack to a wide receiver's hands, especially when the quarterback throws some velocity. That's what it's from. You want to keep that football away from your palms. You don't want this thing. It's not volleyball. You don't want it to hit your palms. You want to stay right in the webbing of your hands. So what do I mean by webbing of the hands? I mean like the fingers, not the fingertips, because that's how you guys are going to jam your finger. I'm talking about the fingers, right? Like your grip. That's why grip strength is super important for wide receivers. You want to catch that thing. You want to receive the ball. You don't want to push the ball away and have it hit your palm. You want to stay in the webbing of your hand because he's doing all the right things. He's got the diamond. He's looking the ball in, but it's palm on the ball and that pushes it away. And that's what causes it to bounce. Now, like I said, how you can get better at this is obviously reps. Now, some of you might feel like, well, that's going to be tough to do because my hands aren't that strong. I feel like I'm not strong enough to do that. That's why you have to do things to improve your grip strength, right? Because we don't want to just rely on my palms. We want to rely on the fingers. We want to have soft hands. We want to be more consistent. So doing exercises like farmer's carry, where you hold a heavy dumbbell and you just walk, fingertip push-ups. You take a weighted plate and you flip it end over end and you catch it. There are so many things that you could do to improve your grip. Pull-ups is another great exercise that will help with this specific aspect. It's not just about hand-eye coordination. That is a very big part of it, and it is a very big part of it, getting reps with the quarterback. I know that, and that's very, very important. But grip strength is something you can work on all the time. When you don't have a quarterback to throw to you, you're in the gym just doing a regular workout, incorporate an exercise for your grip. It's not that hard to build off of, and it's great. There are a lot of exercises like pull-ups that you could accomplish more than one things with that exercise. Okay, so now we're going to look over another over-the-shoulder pass next, and this is a big, big reason wide receivers will drop the ball on an over-the-shoulder pass, specifically an over-the-shoulder pass. This can actually apply to certain passes over the middle, like if you're catching in traffic. Now, some of you might think, well, this wasn't a drop. The D B was able to make a play and knock the ball out. I think this qualifies as a drop because the wide receiver let the DB know exactly where that ball was going to be. Let me explain. So when you're running in man-to-man coverage, this DB is not running like a wide receiver with his head back. He is playing us, right? He's not looking and running for the ball. He doesn't have his head turned because if he turns his head at the wrong time and he misjudges it, he could lose the wide receiver, right? So he is going to play us. More specifically, he is going to play my hands. So if I I show my hands too early and I go up for the ball. This is an example of not having late hands. If I go up for the ball, you are letting him know where the ball is going to go. Now, in high school and in college, they can't run at you with their hands up because that's going to be pass interference. So they're going to wait to see that ball hit your hands. But by you reaching out and showing your hands early, you're telegraphing where it's going to be. You're letting him know that, hey, this is where the ball is going to fall. I'm going to let you make a play on it and just shoot your hand through the middle of my hands. Now, again, this is a great play by that DB. A fantastic play. But if we don't give him, if we don't let him know where that ball is going to go, he has no idea. He literally has zero idea of where that football is going to go. So you want to be late with your hands. When you're running downfield, I don't want to show his hands here. I want him to show his hands like right there, like right when the ball is about to fall right into his chest. Because that DB won't have any chance. He doesn't know where the ball is. He's playing us, fellas. He's not looking back for the ball. He is playing us. So don't give him that luxury of letting him know where to shoot his hands and where to make a play. So fellas, anytime it's a deep pass, over the top, a deep post, deep fade. We want to have late hands. Now let's think about this too. Let's say you're running like a dig route over the middle and you got a DB who's right on your hip. It might be the same scenario. He might be playing you. He sees your hands start to reach out. Maybe he gets his eyes in the backfield. Maybe he starts to play the football. But if he's running and he's playing you, 
let's be late with my hands. Late hands always helps you in any type of man-to-man -man coverage situation. So let's play this again full speed one more time. Great example of showing early hands, and that just leads to that DB getting an easy PBU. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you would like an eight-week wide receiver gym and field workout schedule to follow, weekly exercises, daily exercises, all mapped out with the exact sets and reps to do. So check out that very first link in the description below if you're interested. I'll see you guys next time.